Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be talking about two special tests that are very similar, and they're used in the diagnosis of supraspinatus tears. Those are the full can test and the empty can test. The gist of these tests, before we get into how they're performed, is you're going to have the arms or arm outstretched like this. Now, if I imagine holding a can of soda right here, no product placement, this would be the full can position, right? Because here's the top of the can, and as long as I'm holding the can in this position, there's no fluid leaking out of it, right? If I turned it upside down as if to empty the can, this would be the empty can test position, okay? So it's named for that. So full can is with the thumb facing up, internally rotate the shoulder and pronate the forearm, so the thumb faces down, this would be the empty can position. Always nice when they have a special test named intuitively like this and not after some scientist's name, am I right? In any case, let's go into how those tests are performed. We'll start with the full can test. So to perform the full can test, the patient's gonna be positioned either in standing or sitting, and the patient will elevate both shoulders to 90 degrees in the scapular plane. So again, not right out in front, about 30 degrees of horizontal abduction from neutral. And the thumbs will be facing upward. So just remember, if you're holding a can of soda, so thumb facing up, this would be the full can position. No soda is gonna spill out of the can here. This, with the thumb down, would be the empty can position. We'll see that in just a minute, okay? And then from here, the PT applies manual resistance downward, and the patient attempts to hold the test position. Now this would be a negative test, because as you can see here, she's able to hold her arms up and no side gives relative to the other. Now, hypothetically, if you were using a handheld dynamometer, most clinics only have one of those, you could do one side at a time. But if you're doing it like I'm doing in the video, and I don't have a handheld dynamometer, you're gonna wanna assess both arms at the same time. That way you can feel if one side is weaker than the other. It's a lot harder to do that if you do one side at a time. So of course you're assessing for weakness and also subjective reports of pain by the patient during the test. So a positive full can test would be indicated by weakness compared to the unaffected side and especially with reproduction of the patient's familiar shoulder pain. But remember, this is for a supraspinatus tear. Now, hypothetically, it could also be positive uh, with an infraspinatus tear. Uh, but when you're assessing for the patient's pain, you want that pain to be consistent with a rotator cuff tear. So what does that look like? Well, remember, generally when a rotator cuff muscle tears, it's at the tendinous part of the muscle closer to the insertion. So right around that greater tubercle, okay? Remember, you got the supraspinatus inserting on the superior facet, the infraspinatus is on the intermediate facet, etc. So if there's reproduction of pain here, that's gonna be more indicative of a positive test, okay? And most likely you're also gonna have weakness. If the pain is more up in the subacromial arch, uh, that's not a rotator cuff tear. That's more likely to be impingement, and you should corroborate that with some impingement tests like Nears test, Hawkins-Kennedy, Yoakum's test, and we cover those in separate videos. So you wanna make sure that pain location is also consistent. But also remember, you might also have some anterolateral referral down the upper arm if there's a rotator cuff tear, okay? And then that brings us to the empty can test, which is also used to reproduce symptoms consistent with a supraspinatus tear. Could this also reproduce symptoms consistent with an infraspinatus tear? Yeah, but most of the time it's gonna be a supraspinatus tear and that's how the test is designed. Also note that this test is used in the first part of, and also modified in the second part of another test called the scapular retraction test. The scapular retraction test is a very useful test that we're gonna cover in a later video that helps you differentiate what the treatment course might be for somebody with a supraspinatus tear. Okay, we'll cover that in actually one of the next videos. So empty can test is performed very similarly to the full can test. The patient will either be positioned in standing or sitting, and they will elevate both shoulders, or one, as you see here in this video, to 90 degrees in the scapular plane with the thumbs facing downward. So here was that full can position. If we want to empty the can of soda, we turn it upside down to the empty can position. The thumb is now facing 
downward. And again, it's not quite in the middle, it's about 30 degrees out, and that's where the scapular plane is. So again, the PT will apply manual resistance downward, and the patient attempts to hold that test position, okay? And you would be using one arm like this if you were doing this as part of the scapular retraction test because your other arm is gonna to have to stabilize the scapula, okay? We'll get there a little bit later. And of course, the PT will assess for weakness compared to the unaffected side and subjective reports of pain by the patient during the test. Just like with the full CAM test, a positive test will be weakness compared to the unaffected side, especially with reproduction of the patient's familiar shoulder pain. And again, we want to make sure that pain is consistent with where we would expect a rotator cuff tear to be. So if the pain is near the acromion or it's in the subacromial space, we might need to look at some other special tests because it may be an AC joint pathology. It could be impingement syndrome. It could be a number of other things. So we want to, again, make sure that it's consistent with where we expect a rotator cuff tear to be. In any case, Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the full can and empty can tests. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you very much.